Can you hear that? That's the sound of magic happening. Hi, I'm Ben. And I'm MP. And we just bought a boat that needs a little bit of work done. We are both rookies when it comes to boat ownership and carpentry. So this is going to be a steep learning curve. Luckily, we found an amazing team of shipwrights who accepted the mission of bringing our boat back to life and are now rebuilding a bow with hand tools, ancient knowledge and a lot of passion. Join us on this thrilling journey and wish us luck! <laughs> it doesn't matter if it's a covering plank that's 10 centimeters thick or if it's just a little plank for support of the deck, everything, if it's curved, if it's straight, if it's thick, if it's thin, everything goes with a story plank. Over here is a leftover from a plank of our home. We keep everything we can because eventually we will need it. So now we have this button that came from the top of the deck and it's gonna become a new plank. So you've seen the deck on the starboard side is almost done. Just a bit next to pilot house has to be done still. Uh, I did say the water was running out with those last few planks that we had. We managed to put one on the starboard side and a few more here. As you can see, it's really nice how it makes the curve around the Blasola, which is like the first this piece of wood. Uh, so yeah, while Nezu and Nico are actually cutting the cabezos for the gunwale, these things, this is where the smaller ones start because this is where the gunwale will be a bit lower. Uh, the last few planks are actually being fit into here, so I think we've got one or two more that might fit in. In the meanwhile, MP and I have been in the engine room. I mean, there's always stuff to do while the boat's being built. Building a boat's not just building a boat. Uh, we don't know if we'll show it in this episode or in the next one. We might actually save all the engine parts for a, a single engine episode because we're doing a lot now and then. We have to get some stuff shipped off, come back, have it fixed and buy stuff. So it's not really worth putting it sporadically throughout the episode. So we might save it all for one, but we'll see. But as you can see, this port side deck is also almost in place and soon you'll start seeing some of these columns up to here. snapped 
which isn't a problem, we're just gonna have to wait a bit until we get a new belt, put it on and keep cutting. It's just there's so much wood and it's such thick wood. But, oh well, messy, very thick wood. Most of these, what are we, starboard columns, cabezas are in place. All that needs to be done now, as you can see, here they've got a nice little protective layer where the wood meets the wood. Here it doesn't, so what's gonna happen now is one by one they're gonna be taken out, painted, protected, and then put back. As you can see here, beside me and behind me, the columns of our bulwark are done, are ready. And what I have to say about it is that I think it looks amazing. I'm really, really happy with the result. I think they look great. I can always see the whole thing done, like with the wall and stuff. But I'm really happy already. The deck's looking great. And now starboard is done, at least up to there. And now we're going to do port and I cannot wait to see ready as well. biggest adjustments in the angle of the column I made up here uh, with that wedge underneath it doesn't only hold it in place but it's also by wedging up a bit more it moves whatever is on top of the deck a bit more let me think outwards so Nezo is up here measuring how far out it has to be while Zeka and Ilya downstairs actually hammer the wedge in just to push it into the right place I thought I'd mention now already before you start seeing it many times and not knowing what it is. Over here there's a huge big red, let's call it eyesore. Well, it's kind of in the same, in the right environment by ships and stuff, but it's huge and it's red and it's metal amongst all this beautiful wood and sawdust. Anyway, we decided to go for this because of many reasons. There's loads of stuff in our tiny apartment that is just taking up so much space and on top of that, we're always needing it here and then thinking, ah, oh, we need it now, but it's in the apartment. So let's work on that tomorrow and we kind of mess up our plans and have to do jobs in two days or in multiple days instead of one because we don't have the tools or the parts. So that's all going in there. It's just a plain old container with nothing in it. No windows, nothing. And another reason is there are two little rooms here that are for the carpenters and the tools. And until now, we've just managed to put all our stuff in there, which is not too nice for them or even just in general. So that's also going in there. Uh, this will be hopefully not too full. We want to find some stuff. And as we need it, we can just take some stuff out of here, lock it and so on. So we think this is an amazing idea. And the dog likes it as well. He can't stay out of it or from underneath it. Uh, I thought I'd just mention that because you're going to see that in lots of the coming videos. The days when we run out of wood are finally over because today we did run out of wood to continue building 
these columns but that doesn't mean there's nothing for us to do because we had so many planks already of the purple hardwood just waiting for this moment so now that we cannot continue with what we were on we are going to start working with those planks finally and so this job is to do the double layer of our internal walls of the hull i'm gonna show you you understand it These double uh, purple heart bulkheads are actually being built on both aft by the engine room and let's ignore all this mess around us here and here forwards by the foremast. of the boat has been done here in the aft and also in the bow but the second one has just started that we're making with this purple wood and the point of having it double we're gonna fill it up probably with polyurethane tain. and it's also gonna be good here because that's the engine just right there and here will be our galley and there will be our living area so it's very important that we'll have that for noise sound and also temperature and everything and also for it to be watertight and the hull will be divided in three and we'll have independent pumps in each area of course. Yeah. Yeah. So over there by the engine room it's actually a little bit easier because here you've got this keelson to work with and also the next plank which is the one they're cutting now and they have to make a template for has to come on top of this change angle on top of this but also tucked behind this frame so that's why they took a lot longer to build this one than that one same over here if you have a look this corner had to be measured exactly where well that had to go exactly behind the floor timber as well and i think once this next plank is on it to go a lot quicker then they just have to follow the hole but that's why this time it is taking a lot longer than that one also i know the order of building this boat isn't the usual one like keel uh stem transom hull and then building its way up because we're doing it based on the wood we can get our hands on so for example we were just making the deck and the columns that are going to hold the bulwark up so now we actually ran out of wood for those but what's stopping us from making some of the bulkheads on by the engine room so we had that wood over here, wood over here in the workshop and that got that had been cut already and was being dried so that's what's being worked on right now so fortunately while that's being done some more wood has arrived for more of these columns towards aft so there's no point stopping building that so that's going to be finished right now and then they're going to continue building the columns and then maybe when the columns are finished we'll get more wood for the deck and bit by bit it's all being built and we are just showing it to you guys how we see it and how we're experiencing it so it might be in very crazy order, but the boat's being built and we're very happy about that. Aren't we? We are so happy. Yeah. And it's getting hot now with the sun. So what's crazy no, it's is... cold. I'm wearing my coat. So I have been here last winter as well, and I don't ever remember it being so cold. It's even oh. snowing in this province, and I didn't know snow existed here in Brazil. Anyway, 
It's warming up a bit with the sun, but it's a southern wind, so that's why it's so cold. Yeah. <laughs> planks are ready to be installed one is over there just being painted on the inside outside actually so the bit that we won't see and the other one's just being prepared right now the one forward haven't been nailed in yet they've been put in place because we still need to wait for some more nails but these have all been put in place and nailed in place and cut and then I think there's two more yeah two more there one more there Bluff, how do you feel about having a purple wall? Right now, I think I really like it because it's the only purple wall. I think if we start having more, I'm not sure yet, but I know for sure we will be showing some purple wall in our interior. I think this is amazing. So it's double bulkheads. It's going to be corked from both ends. I'm going to put a little filling compound in between that. Looks nice with the purple wall though. It's not just a black Sika flex, for example. But I think I like it for now. I don't know if we'll get tired of it, but. And we still need like a watertight door to be put in, but that's for later. But right now, we're not in the water yet and we're still going to be in and out working on the engine a lot. So MP, you can head over there because they have almost finished the forward one by the foremast. Really? Let's have a look. So both of those double watertight bulkheads are as good as built. Uh, when it comes to the wood part, of course, there's still the filling that we need to do and the caulking. Now, there is still one plank missing in the forward part, but the aft one is as good as done. 
Now I'm filming it here because I just want to avoid all the noise. So the afternoon has even been sanded down. It looks super nice, it feels nice. All it requires now is the Tremi Tremi sander. And Tremi Tremi is what they call the oscillating sanding machine here. And I like it more than the oscillating, oscillating. So I'm going to call it Tremi Tremi. Uh, the forward one still needs one plank, which is being done right now. It's a very complicated one because there's the columns that hold the roof up and it's got to go all the way around that. But I am not hesitant about them being able to do it properly. And a nice job of it as well. It's looking amazing. So let's go and see that last plank being put in. bulkhead is now also ready it still needs to be corked these uh, these counter sinking holes still need to be filled as in the one by the engine room and it has to be sanded still because this one hasn't been sanded but the room's clean it's not going to collect any more sawdust except for some of that sanding dust but that's fine and what do you think I think that is very, very cool and very impressive. This is where the cabins are going to be, the Ford cabins. So this is going to be by your head if you ever come and visit by your pillow. Ladies and gentlemen, let me present you our combi. <laughs> we got this combi thinking it will be making our lives easier because we're always transporting so much with our car and our car was suffering, but the part of it's gonna make our lives easier was a mistake because this is our new reality now <laughs> besides having to fix a boat we are now also fixing a car daily what do you have to say about this that no regrets no. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't it be wouldn't it have been better to get a new one <laughs> a smaller fiberglass combi? Yeah, a smaller fiberglass combi. <laughs> the moment of truth. So what happened was the shaft from the gears was disconnected from the gearbox. So even though I was changing the gears, it wasn't turning anything in the gearbox. So I managed to fix that. But now I need to know if I can get out of second gear, which is what it was stuck in. Anyway, we'll see. Let's have a look. So, to know if it worked, the car needs to reverse because it would only go forward because it was stuck in second gear. There's a dog here helping me. So you could start. It works, but I stalled. <laughs> Where is the dog helping you? Kaya! Hey! He's getting rid of flies for me. Uh, handbrake was on. Now forward. You fixed it. I've been doing this all day. I'm so satisfied. How high today? The guys are working now on removing all the platforms that we have around Yaba. Do you want to know why? It's for something really, really exciting and scary. As you could see from the previous scene, something really exciting is going to happen next week on our next episode.
But I'm not gonna say anything else about it because I don't wanna give any spoilers. But there is one thing I'm gonna say, which is make sure you subscribe on our channel right now and turn on the notification bell so you won't miss that episode. You'll be the first one to know when the episode ends. And before we say bye, of course, it's time to thank and welcome the people who have donated through PayPal and also have joined us on our Patreon community. So thank you so much and welcome.